what is the degree of unsaturation for 1-butene? The degree of unsaturation is also known as the IHD index of hydrogen deficiency. And if you have one double bond, the IHD will be one. And so another way you can do this is by writing the chemical formula. This is CH3, CH2, CH, double bond CH2. So we have four carbons and eight hydrogen atoms. And so the degree of unsaturation or IHD is 2N plus 2 minus the number of hydrogen atoms divided by 2. So N is 4. N is the number of carbon atoms that we see here. And so this is going to be 2 times 4 plus 2 minus the 8 hydrogens divided by 2. Now 2 times 4 is 8, so we have 8 plus 2 minus 8 over 2. We could cancel 8 and negative 8, so we get 2 over 2, which is 1. And so a double bond has an index of hydrogen deficiency of 1. Now what about a ring? So let's consider the cyclopentane ring. What is the IHD of this particular molecule? A ring has an IHD of 1. It has one degree of unsaturation. And each carbon atom in this ring has two hydrogen atoms. Because every carbon atom is bonded to two of the carbon atoms, and carbon can only form four bonds. So therefore, the molecular formula of cyclopentane is C5H10. So using the formula for IHD, we know it's a 2N plus 2 minus the number of hydrogen atoms. I'm just going to write H for hydrogen, make it easier, divided by 2. So N is 5 in this example. So it's going to be 2 times 5 plus 2 minus 10 over 2. Now 2 times 5 is 10, so 10 minus 10 cancels. And so once again, we have 2 divided by 2, which is 1. So a ring has an IHD of 1. So what about the benzene ring? How many degrees of unsaturation does it have? So the benzene ring has one ring, and it has three double bonds. So the IHD is going to be 4. Now every carbon atom is attached to one hydrogen atom in the benzene ring. So the molecular formula of benzene is C6H6. So to calculate the IHD, it's going to be 2N plus 2, so N is 6, and then minus the number of hydrogens, which is 6 in benzene, divided by 2. So 2 times 6 is 12, and 2 minus 6, that's negative 4, and 12 minus 4 is 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4. And so as you can see, we got the same answer. Now, what about a triple bond? What is the index of hydrogen deficiency of a triple bond? Anytime you have a triple bond, the IHD is 2 per triple bond. And so acetylene has the formula C2H2. So using this equation, it's going to be 2N plus 2, where N is 2, minus the number of hydrogen atoms, which is also 2, over 2. So 2 minus 2 cancels, that's 0, and 2 times 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 will give us the same answer as that. So let's say you have this particular molecule. Let's say we have a phenyl ring and let's say there's a, a triple bond as well. What is the IHD of this molecule? So we have a ring with two double bonds, so that's an IHD of three. And then we have a ring with three double bonds, so that's an IHD of four, plus a double bond, and a triple bond. So three plus four plus one plus ten. So we could say that for this molecule, the IHD, or the degree of unsaturation, is ten. 
So that's a quick way of looking at a structure and telling how many degrees of unsaturation that it has. Now what if you're given the molecular formula but with other elements like nitrogen included? What do you need to do? So let's say we have the elements nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and then elements below that like phosphorus, sulfur, or chlorine. Now if you have a halogen you need to add one to the number of hydrogen atoms per halogen. And if you have nitrogen or phosphorus, you need to subtract one. And for anything in the rows with uh, oxygen or sulfur, it's not going to have any effect. So the formula, as we know, it's 2n plus 2 minus the number of hydrogen atoms over 2. So in this case, the number of carbon atoms is 5. So it's going to be 2 times 5 plus 2. Now we have 7 hydrogen atoms. And we have 1 nitrogen atom. So for each nitrogen atom that we have, we need to decrease the number of hydrogen atoms by 1. So 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2, that's 12. And so we have 7 hydrogen atoms, but we need to decrease it by 1. So we have six effective hydrogen atoms. 12 minus 6 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the index of hydrogen deficiency for a molecule with this formula is 3. Now it's your turn. So let me give you a different example. But first, let me clear away a few things in this page. So let's say we have the formula C8. H10 Cl2. Go ahead and determine the number of degrees of unsaturation of a molecule with that formula. So let's use the same formula 2n plus 2 minus the number of hydrogen atoms divided by 2. So we can see that n is 8. And so that's going to be 2 times 8 plus 2. And then minus, we have 10 hydrogen atoms. And we have two chlorine atoms. So for chlorine, we need to increase the number of effective hydrogen atoms. So we're going to add 2 to 10. 2 times 8 is 16. And 10 plus 2 is 12. Now 16 plus 2 is 18. And 18 minus 12 is 6. So this is going to be 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So once again, the index of hydrogen deficiency for this molecule is 3. So let me give you another example. So let's say it's C9, H7, P, and then Br2, O3. Try that one. So the IHD is going to be 2n plus 2. So we could see that n is 9 in this case. So this is going to be 2 times 9 plus 2 minus the number of hydrogen atoms, which is 7. Now we do have a phosphorus atom, which is in the same column as nitrogen. So for each phosphorus atom, we need to decrease the number of hydrogens by one. And we have two bromine atoms, so that's part of the halogen group. So we need to increase the number of hydrogen atoms for every bromine atom that we have. So we're going to increase it by two. And for oxygen, for any of the calcogens, they will have no effect on it. So we don't have to worry about that. And then divide it by two. So two times nine is 18 plus two. And then we have... 7 minus 1, which is 6. 18 plus 2 is 20. 6 plus 2 is 8. 20 minus 8 is 12. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. So the index of hydrogen deficiency is 6. Now, I want you to understand why for the halogens you need to add 1. And for the, let's say, elements like nitrogen or phosphorus, you take away 1. So let's use 
ethane, for example. So ethane is C2H6. And now let's compare that to an amine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace one of the hydrogen atoms with an NH2 group. So now we have an amine. So notice that the formula is now C2H7N. So by adding a nitrogen, notice that the hydrogen went up. Now there are no double bonds, no triple bonds, and no rings. So therefore, the IHD for both of these molecules must be zero. Now if you calculate it for C2H6, it's going to be zero. So in order for this formula to work, you need to decrease the number of hydrogens by one so that you can get the same number, six, as ethane. So when you replace an H with an NH2, you gain an extra hydrogen. And so that's why elements like nitrogen must decrease the number of hydrogens by one to bring it back down to this level. Now what about replacing a hydrogen with an OH group? What's going to happen? So notice that the number of hydrogen atoms doesn't change. It's still C2H6O. We still have six hydrogen atoms. And that's why for an oxygen atom or sulfur atom, we don't need to change the number of hydrogen atoms because it stays the same. Now, let's say if we were to replace the OH group or the H, that is this H, with a halogen. So this would be C2H5Cl. So notice that we lost the hydrogen. We need to increase it back to six. So for every chlorine atom that we have, we need to increase the number of hydrogen atoms by this number. So if we add one to five, that will give us six. So if you have a halogen like fluorine or chlorine, you need to add to the number of hydrogen atoms.